Welcome back. In the first 15 minutes, we started by cleaning up our space here. So it was, you know, a little bit, not so many toolbars around. We made sure that we had a view toolbar, large tool set for sure. We made sure that we had our model info set, that we had our unit set. We learned how to group things and do layers, how to do arrays, remembering a couple of things primary in these that I'm clicking on there that you want to have a grouped box around so you can grab the face to it by holding the shift key. I'll show you an example. Select here. I'm going to select. I'm going to rotate. I find a face that's nearby. I hold the shift key. I go to my point that I want to rotate about. Left click. click and then I can rotate however I care. We learned that the shift key and the control, shift key holds the face, the control key is used for copies. Right away, we learned that groups are incredibly important, um, that we tend to group things together a lot, but groups have a downside in that even though they're grouped, it is not the same thing as a block. So let me show you because you can't go too long in this program without talking about plugins. We go ahead and have these things group. They act as a unit. And the program kind of gives them, has the potential of giving them some kind of unitary properties in terms of density and things like that. And so with that, I'm going to introduce you to the first plugins. And that you're going to see, and that is this plugin called Sketchy Physics. 3.x is probably a good one, or 3.2, hopefully by the time you look at this. And the Ruby Code Editor is also the two necessary ones that you need to get is the Ruby Code Editor and Alex Schreiber's Ruby Code Editor and Sketchy Physics from Chris Phillips. Now, that said, once again, you go back to View Toolbars and you can start to see that people will start to stack up their toolbars down below the, sample, the, the, um, the standard ones. And so amongst the ones you'll use on a regular basis are Sandbox and Dynamic Components. But I'm going to turn on Sketchy Physics, View Toolbars, Sketchy Physics Joints, View Toolbars, Sketchy Solids. I do this for this reason. It will probably explode when I do it. I've made a bunch of blocks, basically. And before I do the next bit, I'm going to kind of show you where those sketchy physics things went. I kind of jump around on you a little bit because of the way this program works things. But on those sketchy physics, these are actually coming in, and you'll see the same in AutoCAD with something kind of like, kind of like prims or primitives some pre-made shapes that are uh, worth using. However, you want to get really good at just making your own and then creating a group. So I'm going to go ahead and use the one that's most important, and that is the floor. So I turned the floor on there, and we'll prepare for this thing to blow up. But I'm going to now hit Turn on Sketchy Physics, and we'll see what happens. So there you go. You start to see the, the physics world that you see in 3D VIA. I'm pulling on things, I'm knocking them around, so it really has an incredible amount of power uh, and capability. So this is Physi Sketchy Physics 3.1, it was up here. I'm going to hit here and back. And so you have that basic set of ability to do things that, except for that, you apply mass and physics to things, which is pretty typical of Max 3DX, 3DS AutoCAD's product. Um, and other programs where you will try to apply a physics environment to some design environment. So I'm going to hit back here and I'll this time show you how you can take and all of a sudden change the layers on different things. So we'll go back and remember plugins, I'm sorry, window layers and we'll make a few more and you see that some were already made some extra ones were made and I must have lost I did not I'm gonna go with blocks one and then blocks two layers in this program are once again also a function of a property of something so you can change properties in this program not dissimilar to how you do an AutoCAD by grabbing 
right clicking and going to entity info. So go to the entity info and I'm going to change those to black one. And I'll go ahead and do the same with some others. I'm zooming in and out. Remember you have crossing or a window left or right. I'm going to right click, change the entity info, change that to blocks two. And now the ability to go ahead and turn off some things, right? You have that ability and ability later on within scenes to remember what's turned on and off. So you can go ahead and turn things off. And now once again, as you turn here, you might still might some things realize things are, even though they're turned off, they're still actually acting. So that's very common. If you want to make a fake floor, you see that there, things are still sitting on the floor. However, that layer has, because that layer has been turned off. There's not a direct analogy to on or thaw. It's just that you have the basic layer tools like you have in most any program. So that said, we've got the concept here. I'm going to stop the sketchy physics and go back and probably be the last I look at that for a while. I'm going to now grab everything and erase everything. Remember troubleshooting. Like this program, like many others, you turn everything on. This program has additional troubleshooting and that you can turn on hidden geometry as well. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and draw something here. Remember I P for push. And now if I turn view hidden geometry, I don't really see. Everything looks about the same. However, if I go ahead, I'm going to draw a circle here, holding down my mouse button, P for push you can see the hidden geometry of the circle as this program divides circles into little segments, if you would. And you can control that by how many sides it is uh, by an input. All right, now let's get to probably one of the most important things when you're dealing with, especially if you're pulling AutoCAD and you're used to dealing with AutoCAD, and that is direct input it's called, or in other words, mathematical input in either a Cartesian or a polar world and either relative or absolute. Those of you who are finished with a Excel class, remember that that F4 gets you an absolute position. Um, so understanding well, whether you are mathematically talking relative or absolute becomes incredibly important skill to, to intellectualize as important as remembering about units and setting up units and the like. So that said, I've grabbed everything. And once again, you remember I can grab, I can right click and say, I'm sorry, escape, escape, escape works in this program as well. I'm going to right click and make a group. So I've made a group of that. And I'm going to go ahead and make a group of this. Right click, right click, make a group. Now, how do we go about doing direct input? It can be a little problematic, but off to the bottom right is something called the VCB. It's the control box. And so if we want to do drafting of lines or anything directly coordinates, there are two different delimiters that show you whether you're going to go absolute or relative. The hard bracket is for absolute and the greater and less than symbols do not act like they do in AutoCAD, but they act instead to enclose something that's relative. So I'll start by just drafting here on the edge. I tend to like to move my, like I do in AutoCAD, move around. And you see here, as I get close to one of the major axes, or some other sides, this thing will lock onto that. That's called an inferred snap or an inferred direction. And that is something that it takes a while to get used to, but something that AutoCAD now has as part of its standard as well. You notice the standard of red, blue, and green. So you can use that to visually set according to your current coordinates. All right, if I want to go to directly to a place, I open the hard bracket, which is just above the um, the comma, I can give it coordinates, but I always have to give three coordinates. I always have to give three coordinates. It is a 3D program. You must give three coordinates or it will not take it. I hit an enter. You see it took it directly to where I wanted to go. I'll then now do the same direct coordinates again, and I'm going to go to 10, comma, 10, comma, 
zero. And then what I need to do usually is I need to draw another line, hit a space bar, and then erase the last line that I drew. I have a hard time controlling that last line. And so you see right now these lines you know, were drafted absolutely to locations. This is a good time to point out that the reason why you make blocks is that so things don't start to get cut up because this program, anytime there's an overlapping of lines, it will make faces and start to screw up your model. So it's really important to group and componentize and layer early and often in this program. All right, relative coordinates. I can go ahead and draw a line. I'm going to grab the end of that one. This time, again, I'm moving that around just to get that sense of that I've got a kind of a rubber band. And this time you use the greater and less than. So if I want to go 40 feet relative and 20 feet relative, and I'm going to go 1,000 feet, maybe I need to go 1,000 feet up. I hit that enclosed within the greater and less than. I hit the return. And like usual, I need to then click here, hit an escape bar and then select and get rid of my last line. So that's something I found useful. It seems to be extra work, but now I've done something relative. You can use relative like you do often in AutoCAD for moving. I'm going to move this box up 10 foot. You can grab tool, click, and now relative. I can either just type in the length once I've kind of figured it out, or if I want to go in the opposite direction, I just type in minus 20. Now, when you do that, it is going based on the inferred direction that it has started to pull off of your input. So when I type minus 20 here, it'll go that way. It can be a little odd. I'll do this again and show you how it works taking direction, a positive direction from your inferred input. As I say now here, click on that and start to go in this direction. Now if I say minus 20, it actually goes back the other way, opposite from where I went. All right, so you can use it for moves, however. I'm going to take that. I'm going to grab it here. And now I want to move it. I can go ahead and hit that relative coordinate, 10, 10, 10. And it moved it relative from where I was. If I want to move it directly to some spot, I can grab select my point, move it around, now use the hard bracket, and I'm going to go back to 0, 0, 0, hard bracket, not the list bracket, hard bracket, 0, 0, 0, close hard bracket, and it took it directly back. That ability, and the ability then to use a Ruby editor to do a lot of this input, um, and a similarity of input is one of the reasons why this program allows you to kind of grab more power due to plugins um, than you would typically perhaps in AutoCAD unless you were a little bit ambitious with Lisp. And so I'll finally introduce you to the plugins Ruby code editor here. It comes up looking something like that. I suggest that immediately I think you change this to model and you change this to n to t's and you change this to model, and you change this to selection, and this to model. All right, I presume there's a way to save that. But this ability here on your home machines, uh, because we, right now we cannot get it installed, or we have not had a chance to install it on campus, but this Ruby editor really gives you a, a power in addition to what we've seen in class, which is the Ruby console here. So it really gives you the power to do amazing things and start to look at how these inputs uh, can transfer when you're doing repetitive drafting. So that sense here um, gets you pretty far if you assume that finally, and I won't do it here, that you do most of your imports by doing file import and then choosing from a list of different file types. I'm on a pro version here, so you'll see less than that. And on campus, you can, it's an older version, but you can down, upload AutoCAD very easily, but it's through the import. So that's good 30 minutes. It should get you going. In another 30, you should be well on your way. Thanks for listening.